Welcome to Planning Room Outreach and Child Care Resource and Referral Webinar. My name is Candy Novak and I'm the Room Technical Assistance Specialist at Child Care Aware of America. We ask that throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, to please jot them down and you are welcome to email them to me at the end of the webinar or call me with any questions that you may have. Uh, I'll share my email address at the end of this webinar. Today's webinar will discuss planning goals and strategies for integrating Broom into CCRNR outreach and services. I will also share a logic model template and discuss how you can use this logic model to assist you with planning, implementing, and evaluating Broom outreach through your CCRNR. And also, I'm going to share with you Broom action planning worksheets that will serve as um, a tool for your brainstorming for planning room outreach, as well as a more formal room work plan. So planning room outreach. Your agency has made some initial steps already in planning its room outreach. For example, your agency submitted up to three goals for how it envisioned embedding room into your agency's um, outreach to families and providers. You did this through the application process. And by now, you have most likely viewed the webinar on the science behind Vroom, and you've probably also explored Vroom's website and the tools and messages um, that Vroom shares. These steps, plus other discussions that you're probably having, within your agency, among your staff, and maybe even with community partners will be very beneficial in this stage of planning um, to help you further develop your plans for room outreach. Child Care Aware of America, we are really looking forward to seeing how your agency envisions reaching families and providers with important messages about early brain development. So for planning your CCRNR's room outreach, the planning portion of this initiative is really key for successfully engaging families, providers, and community partners. We have um, we are going to share with you three different tools that you can use to help you through this planning process. The first one is a logic model. The second, room action planning worksheets. And third, the room work plan. So throughout the webinar, we'll go through each one of these in further detail. But before we continue talking about planning, some things that you might want to consider prior to the planning process that would um, help you with your planning is to first become familiar with Broom's mission, their messages, resources, and tools. So if you have not had the opportunity or if there are staff members at your agency that you think would benefit from exploring rooms, mission, messages, resources, and tools, please invite them to visit the www.room.org website as well as watch the science, um, the brain science behind room webinar as well. Also, understanding Child Care Aware of America's expectations for room outreach. We've been sharing this um, since the beginning of the project back in January, just some of our expectations, and we will continue to reach out to you and um, remind you of some of those expectations for outreach. For example, uh, the target audience for room outreach being providers, families, and also community partners. We'll also continue to share with you information about collecting data and collecting room stories on your room outreach. Consider staff members and their role in providing room outreach. So prior to planning, really think about who are those staff members that would be able to contribute to this planning process. Who will be involved in the room outreach? Are there specific staff members that have direct interactions with families? Or are, those, are there staff members that collaborate 
with community partners. Um, also, who are the staff members that are in direct contact with providers in your community? So who needs to be a part of this planning process? So let's take a look at the logic model. The logic model is an optional tool that you're going to see in just a moment. And this really shows you the big picture of the outreach. Um, it's a simple communication device, and it, sho it shows you, um, it's a visual of how the different components of your outreach really connect to one another. You can use the logic model to guide your planning, your implementation, and evaluation of your outreach. And the, um, something to remember about the logic model is it can change over time. It may look one way at the beginning of your launch of Room, but it can change throughout the project based on your evaluation um, and reflection on the logic model. So I just wanted to define some terminology for you that you will see on the logic model next on the next slide. Um, input is one of the words that we use um, in the logic model. And input means what you invest. So things like time, resources, tools, partners, staff members, these are all things that are invested into your initiative, your outreach. Activities, those are actions. What are you doing with the outputs, what action steps, or I'm sorry, what, with the inputs, um, you know, what, what action steps will you take? What are you doing with the inputs? And then we also have outputs, what we do, who we reach, those direct and measurable results of activities on the people that you reach. So it might be number of workshops, number of caregivers, number of families, and then also outcomes. Now these can be short term and long term. And these are those changes in awareness, level of knowledge, their attitudes, their behaviors as a result of your um, activities throughout your room outreach. So those things that you might expect from touching the lives of providers and families with room. And then impact is that fundamental change occurring at the higher level, higher level, the organizational, community, or stakeholder level. So here's an example of a logic model that comes directly from Vroom. This can be found in Vroom's Evaluation Guidebook, a guide to evaluating Vroom in your community. This is a nice resource for you, and this is located on page eight. And it just gives you an example of um, just a variety of ways that they see the um, room uh, affecting, you know, a community with um, room outreach. So you can see their inputs. They call their activation phases as well as their outputs for community and caregivers, and those outcomes, the short term and long term. So I share this with you just as um, kind of a guiding tool, just to um, maybe see some of the language that they're using. So it might prompt some thoughts and brainstorms about your own room activation. So based on the logic model, that I just shared with you from the Broom Evaluation Guidebook, we have developed a template for a logic model specific to CCRNR to understand the effects of Broom in you know, a community um, that surrounds CCRNR. So we have inputs, we also have the activation and trusted messenger outputs, which I'll go into more detail in a little bit. And then provider, family, and community partner outputs, we've separated into a different group. And then we have outcomes for both of those audiences as well. And at the bottom, you'll see evaluation and sustainability planning. So here, I've just 
put in some brief examples. This certainly does not show all the possibilities of room activation in a community, but I just wanted to give you um, some examples, some of ideas of what it may look like. And a logic model is going to be very unique to your agency and what you envision your outreach being in your community. So for inputs, just some examples would be your own staff, the room tools, videos, any possible materials you may be using, um, early brain science information that you might be sharing, collaborative partners, and then the activation piece right above are things like maybe you're going to have an orientation for your staff about Vroom and talk about how to integrate Vroom into your CCRNR. Also thinking about um, in terms of activation, introducing Vroom to providers, to families, to community organizations. How are you going to share that Vroom outreach and those efforts from your organization and so forth? And then if we look to the right, trusted messenger outputs, those trusted messengers are those individuals that, or organizations that touch the lives of families and their children. So type of trusted messengers might be listed here, the number of trusted messengers, um, how many were trained, if that's part of your, your plan. And then right below, providers, families, and community partner outputs. So once again, outputs is something very measurable, countable, um, and as a, re as a result of your activation. So number of families reach, number of community organizations reach, number of providers trained. So once again, these are just examples for you. And then to the far right, you'll see those outcomes for trusted messengers and the providers, families, and community partners. So as I mentioned, the logic model is an optional tool. However, it is a helpful um, tool for larger discussion and really looking at you know, the impact of um, room outreach on your, your community. So another optional tool, but I feel like a very beneficial to, tool are the room action planning worksheets. There are six stages for this part of the planning, and what we've done is we've, break in, we've broken down the planning process for room activation into six stages to simplify it, as well as to make sure that all areas of activation are being covered. So <clears throat> for this, um, the room action planning worksheets, they're more of um, worksheets that can be used for your initial brainstorming to really bring your thoughts together, put them down on paper, and then um, transferring them to a room work plan later on, which I'll discuss about, that becomes more formal and um, more detailed. So the planning worksheets really include detailed actions for achieving your agency's goals for launching room in your community. Um, it's a method for organizing your ideas and strategies that are generated through your brainstorming sessions, as well as it describes the way your CCRNR will use the strategies to meet objectives. <clears throat> and it's going to provide you a framework for planning, um, and it will help you really think about how you are going to launch room efficiently and effectively. So we do see this as a beneficial part of the planning process. So these are the six stages for planning room outreach, uh, and these are these six stages are included in the room planning worksheets. Now you receive these um, room action planning worksheets via email recently. If you've had a chance to glance at them, this will um, probably resonate more with you. So the first stage being my ideas for planning to adopt, adapt room for our CCR and our community. Second stage, my ideas for activating room in our community. Third stage, my ideas for introducing room concepts and resources to families, providers, and community partners. Stage four, my ideas for sharing room community-wide using best outreach practices. 
Stage five, my ideas for reflecting and evaluating our outreach for improvement. Stage six, my ideas for sustaining room in our agency, CCRNR's outreach services. So as you can see, it covers a lot of different components of um, this initiative in your community. So once again, I'm gonna take some time to go over some terminology that you will see on the room action planning worksheets. So the first one being concept and idea. So you can also think of that as goals and objectives. The concept idea, um, the concepts or the goals are more those general broad um, ideas. So they're, they're more broad ideas or concepts for planning and you will generate those general ideas or concepts for each stage of the planning. So it may be broad, you know, what are the broad goals? What are the more narrow objectives for each of the six stages? Next is strategies. We can also define that as activities. Um, brainstorm and list strategies to achieve goals and objectives for each stage. So what are those things that will um, that you will be doing to work toward those goals and objectives. Next is tasks and steps. And they can also be um, thought of as indicators and outputs. So brainstorming tasks and steps necessary to carry out suggested strategies. And then we have needed resources. These are, as you're doing your planning, just jotting down what are some resources that you may need to carry out your tasks or your steps, and as well as needed support. Is there somebody or some type of some support from someone that you need to carry out those tasks and steps? So jot those down as a part of your, your planning worksheets. So let's look a little bit more closely at stage one. Um, stage one is planning to adopt an adaptive room into CCRNR. Planning for effectively activating room outreach in your community. So I really refer to the room playbook for the, this first stage. They have some very helpful guidelines. And as you can see, the three check marks um, on the bottom right, I've listed some page numbers for you. But this is really getting you to think about how is your agency as a CCR and R going to approach adopting and adapting Broom. You've probably already thought about this, but this will help you um, kind of fine tune and put in writing what type of approach you're going to take to the launch of Broom. So the first one is choose a pathway for activation. This can be found on page 14. So Broom divides it into three different pathways for activation. So will your agency approach it as a community member, a provider, or a community network? So depending on your agency, you may fall into one of those pathways for activation. So I encourage you to look at page 14 of the Room Playbook. Now, I know that that was emailed to you um, a few weeks back but also you can go on the room.org website and look under the For Professional tab to find the room playbook as well. And then the second one is, is your CCRNR the anchor partner for room outreach in your community? That's page 37 of the room playbook. An anchor partner is really that backbone organization that will coordinate resources, events, and the involvement of community-based organizations as well as drive room integration throughout the community. Most likely your CCRNR will be the anchor partner for the room initiative in your community. However, if there is an agency in your community that is already providing some strong room outreach, you may wanna consider partnering with them to reach families with room. And then third, you've heard this, um, this phrase before, um, trusted messengers. We brought it up at our first TA exchange call and asked that you start brainstorming a list of trusted messengers. 
This can be found on page 38 through 41 of the room playbook. Trusted messengers are those people or organizations that already have existing relationships with families. And so to you know, brainstorm a list and identify who are those trusted messengers, who are the ones that have those existing relationships that will be able to easily touch the lives of families and children with Broom to deliver that message um, about you know, the early brain building um, messages from Broom. And I find this to be a very helpful visual in planning and how I'm going to integrate Broom not only into the agency's outreach, but as well as um, it gives me ideas of how to, or who, through what trusted messengers um, and partners that might exist in a community, can we bring um, Broom, you know, to families. So this is called the Broom Moments Framework, and it's also located in the Broom Playbook. But I wanted to share it with you here, because I really feel that it can assist you with your brainstorming during this planning phase. Um, to see who the messengers are in your community that touch the lives uh, of children and families. So this is stage one of the Room Action Planning Worksheet. As you can see, it's uh, signified up in the left-hand corner that it's stage one, but also in the rectangular box, it'll tell you it's stage one and my ideas for planning and adopting um, and adapting room for our CCR and our in community. And the terms that I defined for you are listed on the far left. And then you will also know that there are three columns for you to list separate concepts and ideas, as well as the strategies, the tasks, and the needed resources and needed support for each one of those concepts and ideas. Now you may need all three columns. You may have that many ideas for each stage. However, um, you may not utilize all three columns either, and that's okay. So just know that the, those are options. Um, so up to three would be great. At the bottom, you'll see a recap and review. Each stage has a recap and review section at the bottom of the table. These questions are provided as prompts to help you consider and think of various aspects of planning for each stage. Stage two. So I'm going to continue to go through each stage, but I'll go through them briefly, um, knowing that you have probably seen the Broom Action Planning Worksheets but I want to walk you through and define a little bit further what each stage means. So stage two is activating broom in your community. So now we're talking about planning about planning for active broom activation in your community. So now it's not only knowing who your trusted messengers are, but bringing those trusted messengers together in your community so that the broom initiative can be activated efficiently and effectively. So one thing that you may want to do um, is to plan a meeting to introduce room to trusted messengers. This may be one meeting, it may be, you know, individual meetings, it may be small group meetings. It really depends on your plans and what works for your agency. Another thought is to share room's messages, tools, and resources with trusted messengers. So what messages will you be sharing? What tools do you want to, um, you know, make them aware of? and as well as the resources. And also in your planning, just consider what strategies would you put in place for um, making sure collaboration continues throughout your initiative, as well as what strategies for communication do you want to put in place so that you have back and forth communication, as well as receive feedback on the room outreach that the trusted messengers are really going to help you with. All right, and here we have stage two of the Room Action Planning Worksheet. I will note that um, each stage is a different color, and that was done intentionally. So stage two is this plum color, and you'll see that this will correlate 
with your groom work plan, that more formal uh, plan of your groom outreach. Moving on to stage three, this is about introducing groom. So we're, we're continuing on with our um, groom outreach, and now we're moving from the trusted messengers to introducing groom out into the community. So introducing groom's concepts and resources to providers, families, and community partners. So some just um, key points on this is to brainstorm ideas for introducing groom to child care programs, family child care providers, um, exploring strategies for embedding groom into current CCRNR outreach and services to families, and consider collaborating with community partners. So who are those community partners that you would like to collaborate with to expand groom outreach to families? Those partnerships are really key in reaching as many families as possible in your community. And for stage three, we'll allow you some space to document your brainstorm on how you're going to introduce room concepts and resources to families, providers, and community partners. And then maybe at this stage that you may even want to print off an extra um, copy of stage three room action planning worksheet if you have you know um, additional concepts and ideas for this stage stage four sharing your room outreach this is now how do you capture and share the room outreach efforts in your community so when you're introducing and engaging families and providers and community partners in the room um, outreach, capturing that and then sharing it back out to the community. Um, so we call them, or actually room calls them room moments, and it's those interactions between um, trusted adults and children. So whether it's a provider and a child, a parent and a child, a grandparent and a child, but capturing those moments of interaction um, where it's a brain building moment and then sharing that back out to the community. So, and that can take place in a variety of ways. But think about that as you're doing this part of your planning, um, this brainstorming session. Consider current communication methods to share your room moments. So what are you, how do you already communicate out to parents? Um, to providers, to the community, whether it's social media, newsletters, and you know, so forth. Brainstorm ideas for places, events, and situations to capture room moments. So being prepared to look for those room moments and um, to capture them and then share them back out to the community. And there's your room action planning worksheet for stage four. And now stage five, evaluation and reflection. Now this is something that we will be sharing a lot more information on, but we want you to begin planning for your own agency's evaluation and reflection of room outreach. So evaluate and reflect on room outreach efforts to determine how effective um, your room outreach is to improve strategies along the way and also sustainability. So here are some things to consider. Think about what questions does your agency want to know about its room outreach. So during this brainstorming of stage five, you know, think about what are those things that your CCRNR wants to know about room outreach. Strategize methods for collecting that information. Um, but also the information needed by CCAOA. And this will be coming to you in more detail shortly, but I know that we shared some more high-level um, data collection points. For example, we're really interested in your room stories. So um, being able to share back with us how room has impacted um, your CCRNR and your outreach efforts um, where do families or how do families find 
the value in Broom? How has it impacted their lives, their daily lives with their children, as well as providers? How has Broom impacted them? So once again, we will be sharing um, other points of data collection, but those are more high-level things that we're very interested in. Um, identify current evaluation methods that can be adapted to collect data for broom outreach efforts. So you probably already have different evaluation data collection methods in place at your agency. So how can broom um, collecting data for broom just be embedded in your current evaluation methods? For example, if you plan on providing some professional development to providers around a room. Can you just embed, you know, an evaluation question into your existing evaluation for gathering feedback about room? Right, and there is stage five for the room action planning worksheet. And then lastly, we have stage six, sustaining change. So really thinking about Sustaining change through expanding broom outreach efforts and continuous collaboration with community partners. Thinking about broom, um, the life of broom beyond this nine month project. Um, as you know, I hesitate to call it a project because it's an, an initiative. And we really hope that broom will continue on in your community um, past this nine months. So reflect on strategies to continually embed room into CCRNR outreach and services. So if it's embedded into your existing outreach and services, um, it will be more likely to be able to be sustained, you know, through your, your outreach and services. Brainstorm ideas for sustaining the room initiative through your agency, and also think about the partnerships that you already have, but as well as maybe partnerships that you would like to establish that could help you sustain change as well as sustain room in your community. And there is the room action planning worksheet for stage six. So now I'm going to go over the room work plan. So this is considered the seventh stage of the planning process. And stage seven is where everything um, kind of comes together and develops into a more formal plan for launching room in your community. So the room work plan is the final and formal stage of planning room outreach. So the completion of the room action planning worksheets for stages one through six really serves as the groundwork, the brainstorming for this more formalized plan of outreach. So you can take all those room action planning worksheets and be able to um, transfer them and fine tune them into this more formalized plan of outreach. The room work plan is not optional um, like the other two planning tools. The Broom Work Plan is the one that we will need you to share back with Child Care Aware of America. And also, we encourage you to share it with your Broom mentors, which I'll talk more about in a little bit. The Broom Work Plan depicts action steps for launching Broom and is also what we consider a working document. Although it's more of a formal plan, we know that across your initiative and your, your outreach, that there will need to be adjustments at times just based on feedback, um, your evaluation and data collection, and reflecting on that feedback and um, data collection may um, lead to adjustments that need to be made in your, your room work plan. So we do see this as a a flexible working document. So stage seven, room work plan and commencement. Bringing room to your agency and embedding it into your services. So once you've developed this room work plan and you've shared it back with Child Care Aware of America, you're really ready to launch room into your community. 
So please utilize those ideas that you generate through the Broom Action Planning Worksheets that you know um, provided the groundwork for this more formal Broom Work Plan and complete the Broom Work Plan. And then just make it part of your routine to reflect on the Broom Work Plan to see if any adjustments need to be made. So just to go over a few different parts of the broom work plan to help um, define some of the terminology. At the top of your broom work plan, you will see that there are um, smart objectives that you need to develop. So this is more of that targeted effort toward meeting an overall outcome for each stage. So each of those six stages that you've been um, that you will brainstorm for. Um, each objective, as you can see, it's called a SMART objective. So when you write it, you know, want to make sure it's specific, it's measurable, it's action-oriented, it's realistic, and it's time-oriented. Right below the SMART objective is the overall outcome. This is what you hope to change as a result of your outreach. So that, um, that broader goal, that broader vision. So an outcome is uh, defined as changes that have taken place because of your outreach. So it might be a change in a certain behavior or uh, an awareness of room and early brain science, a change in knowledge. So what, what is the overall, overall outcome or each stage that you are planning for. To define some of the other terminology that you will see on the room work plan, um, activities, what will be done, what are your strategies, indicators, are those markers or stages of progress and outreach, ways of knowing that change has happened, that progress is occurring and outcomes are being met, so these are those measures of change in knowledge, awareness, attitude, behavior. Output are those data points, direct results of outreach activities, and they're typically countable. So it might be number of providers reached, number of workshops, number of parents, collaborators. These are who is responsible for this activity that's part of your, your plan for the specific stage. Who's going to be responsible for those listed activities? Who's going to help carry out those tasks? Timeline are the expected due dates. And then reflection, thoughts during the developing work plan or routine reflection. So the reflection um, place on the room work plan are for you to jot down just thoughts that have occurred while you're developing the work plan or when you go back and reflect upon the work plan. So let's take a little closer look about how the room um, work plan is formatted. So just to notice up in the upper left hand corner it does say stage seven. This is just to signify that this is the final stage of planning um, for the and it's the room work plan. Um, also, where the arrow is, it's just showing you that you are planning, um, doing the more formal planning for stage one, which is planning to adopt ADAPT Broom in our community. So you can take your ideas from the Broom Action Planning Worksheets from stage one and now formalize your, your work plan. And then you'll see SMART Objective 1.1 reflects that you're in that first stage in planning your first SMART objective for stage one. The color of the rectangular box, you can see it's the navy blue, also signifies that you are in that first stage and correlates with the action planning worksheets. So here I just wanted to show you moving on with stage one. So you're still in stage one, planning to adopt a DAP room community. And you'll notice that this is 
the second objective of that first stage. So we see 1.2. So it's the first stage still, but just your second objective. And then stage two, I just wanted to show you how um, the format changes a little bit, the colors. Um, so we still have stage seven up in the left-hand corner, signifying that this is the room work plan, the final stage of planning. But um, in that colored rectangular block or yeah, box, we have the plum color showing that you are in stage two, which correlates with your room action planning worksheets. So stage two, activating room in our community. And you're on SMART Objective 2.1, signifying that this is the second stage, the first objective. Now, there will be three, um, three copies or three papers, pages for each stage so that you can have up to three objectives that you're planning for for each stage. You may have more, you may have less, depending on the stage you're in and what your plans are. If you need to make additional copies, feel free to do that if you have more than three objectives for a specific stage, but also know that you may have less objectives than three as well. Now, when I emailed excuse me, the planning tools to you, you may have noticed that they are all writable documents. So you'll be able to type in the boxes and be able to print those out. And I just want to do a quick little crosswalk for you to show how these two planning tools work together. So on the left, you have the room action planning worksheet. On the right, you have the room work plan. So you can see, once again, the colors coordinate so you can make sure you're um, planning between the same two stages based on um, that it's written stage one, but also hopefully the color will also help you um, track that you're on the, same, on the same stage. But also just the terminology, we wanted to share this crosswalk with you. So the concept idea you can see is broken down into the objective and the overall outcome. The strategies on the room action planning worksheet are also the activities on the room work plan. The tasks and steps on the left on the room action planning worksheet is broken down into more detail on the room work plan um, that is listed as the indicators and the outputs. And then also the needed resources and needed support on the Room Action Planning Worksheet are joined under collaborators on the Room Work Plan. The difference on the Room Work Plan are those expected due dates under timeline as well as the place for you to write any reflections. So thank you for joining on the planning the room outreach and CCR in our webinar today. Um, if you have any questions, here's my email. Once again, just um, contact me at candy.novak at usa.childcareaware.org with any questions you may have. Other opportunities for us to discuss planning further will be at our um, technical exchange group calls as well as our individual TA sessions that we have scheduled. And please also um, use the opportunities uh, during conversations with your room mentors to discuss planning as well. Um, it's very beneficial if you share your room work plans with them after you have them completed, because this will help you um, work with the room mentors and be able to reflect upon your outreach efforts and your plans and to evaluate those progress toward outcomes. Um, lastly, please submit your room work plan um, to me by February 28th. I believe it's a Thursday, and the email is listed above. Thank you for participating in this webinar.